Piper is five, so I'm, yeah. that's the six. Month questionnaire ASQ. Okay. Um, so basically, this is just a questionnaire about your child's social emotional development so far, just based on your perception. It's really helpful for Dr. Marks um, okay. to have this filled out before he visits with you. And it's just 34 questions, and you can just mark either often, sometimes, rarely, or if it's a particular concern, um, you can mark that. And okay. then at the end, there's a chance for you to write any general questions or concerns out about your child. Okay. Um, yeah, so if you could fill that out before Dr. Marks visits you, that'd be great. Yeah, I'd be happy to. Thank you. All right. Do you seem happy? Mm hmm Do you seem happy sometimes? Yeah, I do. Yeah, okay, I think so too. So do you have any concerns about her development or her learning or her behavior, uh, you know, compared to other kids her same age? Uh-huh. Um, I think my only concern might be that people have a hard time understanding her. Mm -hmm. So I always know what she's saying because I'm their mom, but even her dad sometimes can't understand, and we often use her brother as our translator sometimes ah. when she's talking because he can almost always understand what she's saying. Okay, so thank you for sharing that with me. Yeah. Here we go, we get to choose. Which book would you like to have? So one is called Duck on a Bike, uh, and then this one is about princesses. So which book would be your choice? That one. Oh, I wonder, princesses. I kind of thought that you might pick that one. So it's really important that when you're looking at these books that you, um, you can turn, I see you can turn the pages probably one by one now, can't you? You probably were able to do that at age three. So. Um, do you like to talk to your daddy about the pictures and what's going on? Yeah. Are you at the point where you can recognize certain letters? Can you, do you know any of the letters? Maybe the letter P that begins with Piper? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You know that letter, right? Mm -hmm. That's great. And so this book has lots of fun activities. You can do it with your, your mom and your dad. And the best thing is it's not TV. Here are some uh, activity sheets that you could, uh, some learning activities that you could do with her to just help okay. promote healthy development and behavior. Um, also, I, th I like to talk about the four T's. Uh, number one is talk, talk, talk to your child. Number two is take turns talking to your child. Number three is um, just turning off the TV and your cell phone. And then number four is just tuning into what she's doing and saying. The, those four T's really make a difference, I yeah. believe, yeah. I like that. That's okay? Yeah. For the question, does she talk like other children her age? Yeah. There was a concern there, so could, could you tell me more about that? I'm just not sure if people understand her as well. Mm -hmm. So if you ask her a question, you usually can get it if you know what you're talking about, but yeah. Yeah. at the park or when she comes up with some her own idea and comes and tells us it's hard for us to guess even her dad has a hard time knowing what she's saying and her brother is a translator yeah he is pretty good he usually can figure yeah. it out okay and so and then it was again for the the third question you said understand what most of your child says you said no and um so there was just some concerns in this in the other part of the questionnaire that just talked about how 
people are understanding her. And I, I look through her, her, her medical records, you know, before at the beginning of my day, and I know that she's had four ear infections in the past year and that her half-brother is hearing impaired. And so that information plus those, those concerns in what we call the overall section just made me think that maybe it would be a, just we should play it safe and just have an audiologist take a look at her hearing. Oh, okay. And, um, you know, early intervention is, is something that I, I do very, you know, if there's any concerns whatsoever, I feel like it's, it's nice just for them to sort it out. Um, what do you think about that? Would you be okay with that? You know, I'm not sure I know what early intervention is. Sure, sure. Um, so early intervention, these are educators, these are early childhood educators who have special expertise in working with children. Hi, it's okay, it's okay. And they, they help with um, assessing how they're doing with their developmental skills, including speech okay. and ex you know, expressive speech, uh, uh, articulating words. And at 36 months, you know, in my experience, usually um, the mother and father understands most of what they say at And you know, I'm glad months. you brought that up about her yeah. half-brother, because he actually wasn't diagnosed in, with hearing loss until he was about six. So that's oh, always been a concern. Okay, so it's something that developed. Over yeah. Time. Okay. Mm -hmm. I want to just kind of go over a few of the questions, okay? Um, so one of the questions that was concerning to you uh, was, uh, does your child cling to you more than uh, you expect? And you said often or always. Can you expand on that? Yeah, well, mostly when we transition into uh, new environments or um, getting used to new people or faces, like, you know, just different things like that. And, uh, but she tends to warm up after certain period of time. Mm -hmm. Okay. One, two, so she can be clean? She can be, yeah. So yeah. she'll yeah. she'll show it physically, like cling to my leg, yeah. actually just cling to me and then kind of like bury her, her face in the mane until she feels comfortable. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, another question you said, uh, when she, when upset, uh, can you calm your, your child down within 15 minutes? And you said sometimes. So could you expand on that a little bit more? Yeah, sometimes. Um, she's five, so I, she, I feel like she still gives me some pretty good tantrums. And mm -hmm. uh, some, sometimes it yeah, takes longer than 15 minutes to, to uh, be able to talk to her okay. or calm her down. And, uh, and sometimes it doesn't. And mm -hmm. I just try and work through it. Right. Uh, I'll fax a ch uh, chart note of this visit today so they have all the information. They don't have to ask you all the same questions over again. Oh, that's great. That's because I know life is busy. And then um, they'll call you as well in case you forget to call them. Okay. Okay? Great. Thank you. Great. Yeah. Thanks so much. And if you want, if, her, uh, if she starts having more temper tantrums and her behavior seems uh, like it's escalating in a bad uh -huh. way, uh, this is another questionnaire, and it's called the. It's, it looks at her behavior or her social emotional development. Okay. And if you have further concerns and you want to schedule a follow up office visit with me, that's great. Okay. And you could do this before that visit if you need to. Okay, um, that would be great because I actually I think I may have some concerns sometimes when we go into public when she sees other kids instead of wanting to say hi to them, she'll say to me, "I don't like them. I don't like that girl." And uh, it's tricky because I don't really know how to respond. We're usually in the store. Mm -hmm. And um, so I just kind of try and ignore it. But it seems like that's coming up a little more. And when people say hi to her, she says, I don't want to say hi to them. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that's typical or maybe that would help me kind that's, of look at that. That's a great reason to fill out that questionnaire okay. because that'll help, um, help us sort out as far as whether there is a behavioral concern or if there is not and it's just a typical thing that most yeah. other three-year-olds do. It, I, I mean I hope it's typical it just it's a little uncomfortable also. Yeah. There it is. I always find that it's hard to take one thing that a child does and yeah. then make a determination about whether it's okay or not. I think ask this asks you know 30 36 questions that are really good questions. Great. Okay. The overall uh, score of this questionnaire says that she's near the cutoff, so it's, um, it's one of those scores where I think that uh, mostly what I want to do is just 
talk about preschool. Um, is she in preschool or has she been in preschool last year or? No, she hasn't. Okay, gotcha. And then is she going into kindergarten in the fall? Yeah, the, yeah. She is, okay, gotcha. Um, and so we have, a, we have some time before she actually gets into kindergarten. Okay. So, you know, I would strongly suggest getting her into preschool. Okay. Uh, preschool is a wonderful thing to help her with, um, you know, just social skills, get interactions with other kids, and just kind of getting warmed up to other adults besides you and her mother. Okay. Um, especially okay. since she's so clingy. Yeah. Um, so the main thing is just getting, you know, giving the preschool a call and getting her in right away. Okay, and um, I'll give you these, um, these are some learning activities you can do to try and uh, promote healthy behavior and social skills and emotional regulation. So uh, usually we want kids to be able to calm down within 15 minutes, but um, it takes time and it takes practice. Okay? All right, thanks. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. See you later. Okay? Okay, it was so nice seeing you. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> wow, that was nice. Okay. Entonces, señora, uh, siempre hablamos de desarrollo de los niños en los chequeos físicos porque es una parte importante para asegurar que están sanos generalmente. Chequeamos igual como chequeamos de su peso, su estatura, etc. Chequeamos de su desarrollo, de cómo va comunicando, de cómo mira de cómo se va comunicando, de cómo usa las manos, etc. Entonces, um, gracias por llenar el cuestionario, que siempre nos ayuda para asegurar que esté normal uh -huh. en todas partes. Y vamos a ver, según su edad, uh -huh. debe cuando vea un chirio dentro uh -huh. de una botella transparente, tratar de tocarlo, especialmente con el dedo índice. Entonces, vamos a ver. What I see is, um, in clinic, I don't get a lot of pushback from families. No one ever refuses the initial referral. But then I get notification later on that the complete evaluation just didn't happen, that ultimately the family declined the service. And um, I think we need to figure out as pediatricians how to reach across that cultural barrier and, and help that and make that happen. Um, and explain the process that um, we're going to refer the family um, and someone's going to call them from this agency and then um, do a phone evaluation and then proceed with the evaluation if needed and that they should accept that call without any fear and um, continue with any services that are offered. Um, I think we need to explain to them that this is a vital part of their child's health and it um, ensures that their future is secure as well and that these are great uh, resources in our community. These are experts. These are very kind and good-hearted people that will create a very non-threatening environment for their child to be evaluated and um, receive the services that they need. It's important for pediatricians to know four core things about the referral process when the ASQ or the ASQ SE shows areas of concern. Number one, discuss strengths first. It's important to celebrate the children's milestones and where, in the areas where they're doing typical or they're doing their mastering tasks, talk about that and celebrate it with the parents. Start with the positive. Uh, number two is discuss the areas of concern second um, and, and really uh, hone in on the benefits of early intervention or an early childhood special education program. Um, what are the benefits? Discuss that with the parents. Uh, n point number three is that it's important to uh, discuss the concept of don't wait, let's play it safe and just give the, the agency a call. That's a very important point in, instead of the old way of thinking which is well let's just wait and see. Uh, the fourth and final point is uh, to discuss the process with parents and it's very important to say that a patient care coordinator or a navigator is going to call you and, and uh, help you get linked to this, this early intervention agency. So the thing is, is that um, sometimes when they get that call, the parents say that they don't have concerns when they kind of did. Uh, so just if you talk about the process and that somebody's going to call them, that makes it more likely that they're going to feel comfortable with that call and then feel more comfortable with getting connected with the early intervention agency. Um, and it's also, when you're talking about the process with the parents, it's important to say that our medical home is going to be communicating the results of the ASQ or the ASQSE with 
the early intervention agency. So they have all the, the questions answered. They don't have to ask the same questions again. And, um, and also maybe a copy of your chart note from the visit would be good to share with the early intervention agency as well. Another thing I want pediatricians to just know is that the ASQ and the ASQSE, they are parent um, report items. And so you're using the parent as an educator. The parent is, knows more about this child than you could ever hope to know in a 15 minute visit. And um, by asking these questions, you're priming them, you're uh, getting them interested in specific tasks that their child may or may not be doing.